afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to our weekly mental health moment. Um, come back today. I want to introduce a very special guest we brought on today, Mrs. Nisha, who is the counselor director at the Andrew Center here in Tyler, and also my direct supervisor um, for the veterans program here in our five county area that I cover with MVPN. That being said, she's going to give us some really neat information information today, some tidbits on what we do, how we do it, and just another way to show our community. And our, and our veterans that we're here to help you and we want we want to be the person here to help you. So that being said, good afternoon, Miss Nisha, and thank you for joining us and take the floor away. All right, thank you. Um, it's good to be here. So today we're going to talk just a little bit about um, suicidal thoughts and that sort of thing. When we think about suicide, one suicide is too many. And so we want to do everything that we can to stop that, prevent that, and help people to know that there are other options. So for the veterans, there's approximately 17 to 18 every day in Texas that commit suicide. We want to do something about that. So we have some suicide prevention programs and we want to work with that. <clears throat> some of the things that we might think about are, are they having depressions of or symptoms of depression, such as feeling depressed for two weeks or longer, more days than not. Um, are there changes in their eating and sleeping patterns, trouble with concentration, issues with feeling guilty about things that are not their fault, um, and thoughts of suicide. So those would be some symptoms of depression. And then also we want to look at some things that might be triggers for people. So things that the people around them that care about them can look for. Triggers are red flags, I guess. Red flags is probably a better word. So some of the red flags would be people that might be getting the business in order or um, they are not sick but they're getting their, their will together, things like that. Have they had a previous suicide attempt? Um, are they more moody than general? Are they having anger problems or severe anger outbursts? Are, there, are they more emotional than normal? Some of those kinds of things. Um, feeling fatigued, um, having trouble with concentration, any of those kinds of things. We want to look at that. Also, um, feeling helpless and hopeless. We all know that when you feel depressed, you kind of feel helpless and hopeless. Um, but a lot of times it's for whatever situation is going on. So we want to help people know that there's another way to deal with that. Most people that feel suicidal do not want to die. They just want the pain to go away of whatever's going on. So if we can help them process the things that are going on, then hopefully that will be better and we can prevent that suicide. So that's something that we're definitely trying to do. Um, any thoughts about that, Jeffrey? Yeah, I guess one thing, especially from a veteran's point of view, that I was gathering what you were saying. Suicide is not something that's just a sudden onset. It's not It's not something where like a cold where I got the 24-hour suicide bug. It's not what it is. I'm hearing depression. I'm hearing um, long, not just depression is normal, right? And so as far as a human emotion, uh, we, we get depressed about things. We were saying it's long-term depression, especially it doesn't change. You know, there's um, getting away from that normal habit, even though depression is normal, but typically this is a buildup. This yes. is something that... Yes. There are red flags before there's an attempt, usually. Mm -hmm. okay. Most of the time. And I, I think that people are afraid to ask that question. They're afraid to say, um, are you having suicidal thoughts? But it's okay to ask that. We are not going to put that thought in someone's head that hasn't already thought about it. That's one of the myths, I believe, about when you, when you address suicide is by asking them bluntly, are you suicidal? People believe, oh, that's just going to make them want to do it. Right? No, that's a myth, correct? Absolutely. That is definitely a myth. Um, and, you know, there are certain risk factors. So if we're looking at some of those things and then if someone says they're suicidal and they have a specific plan or they intend to hurt themselves or they have the means to carry out the plan, those are definitely things that we want to look at and be concerned about. Because what we know is, of course, in our field, we know that there's help and it, they don't have to be alone. We're going to walk down that road with them. We are not going to um, start the process with them and then just let it go. We're going to do what we can to be with them on that road. And so if they need to walk into the Andrews Center Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, they can do that. If they wanted to walk into the emergency room, they could do that. We've got a 24-hour crisis hotline, and um, I've got those, actually got those numbers right here. Okay. So the number to the crisis hotline, which is 24 hours a day, is 877-934-2131. And then our warm line, which is Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, the number for that is 
1-800-273-4988. Say I'm sitting in the middle and, you know, I'm, and I don't, what is, and I know there's, there's so many different flavors of life in every general direction, but if we were to sit there, what's a good defining line between I need to call the crisis line and I need to call the one line? So for the one line, that's a great question. So for the one line, that would be, I'm struggling. I'm really kind of having a hard time. And I just need to process with somebody. I need to talk with somebody who is going to be unbiased. Because sometimes with the fam- family or friends, they may be a little more biased about certain things. But the one line is going to be completely an unbiased person. Um, and then if you're looking at the hotline, that's going to be more for people who I am having suicidal thoughts and maybe I am at home and I'm alone or I've been drinking and I definitely feel suicidal and I'm scared. Um, And so the hotline staff can um, arrange for officers to come and help someone to get to the hospital, to give them transportation to the hospital. And those officers aren't going there to arrest you. That's another misconception. You call the police. I get that a lot. You know, I want help, Jeff, but I don't want to really tell you my help because... The police are going to show up. Sure, absolutely. And that's a valid concern, and I can understand how that could be scary, you know, um, because, like I said, most people, you know, they know they need some help, but then they're afraid of, what does that mean? I've never been to the hospital before. The police have never been to my house before. And so if we can ease their mind at all, that process is not for them to end up in jail or any kind of scuffle. That process is to say, you know what, I'm hurting, I need help, um, and I probably need to go to the ER, the ER to maybe go to the hospital, but I'm afraid to even drive myself. And so they can kind of help with that process. But also, the other thing is, if the hotline staff can kind of talk with the person and talk them through that process, and maybe they can walk in the front door to the Andrews Center the next morning, then that's what they would try to have them do. They try to do the least restrictive thing to get the person help and get them a free Okay. That's great information. We'd like to thank you all for joining us today for another mental health moment. And just remember, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, you want to dig further into this, and just actually on that, um, before I exit, it's kind of how the business goes, right? You think last minute. If you're a... If you consider, say you have someone in life that is feeling suicidal and you consider yourself part of that support system, there's also help for you. Um, we have something called mental health first aid training. And that allows, I call it, it's like, think of it as a, a first responder, as but not, you know, not like the ambulance side, but similar for your mental health. So you're not going to diagnose them. You, you can't save them necessarily from those thoughts, but what it does put you in a position to, it teaches you some addressing techniques, some ways you can talk to some individuals in crisis as well as educating you and spinning you up on resources so you can assist that veteran or whoever it may be to that next level of professional care. That being said, if you have any more questions or comments, you want us to expand upon this topic, you have some special questions, by all means, call us at CanV at 903-566-1010. You can email myself at jhurley at andrews with an S, center.com or email Casey, that's C-A-S-E-Y at CanV.com. CampVTyler.com. I want to give that to one more time just because I confuse myself. So email me at Casey at CampVTyler.com. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe so you can get our future content, past content, and catch up with all the mistakes I make on this weekly. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Mm-hmm.